Hey guys, welcome back to the shed. So we're going to be doing a video on the pulse generator, which is this unit right here, hidden behind the CDI cover. So I want to give you guys a rundown on how this works, and how to set it up, and what to watch for. Okay guys, so um, you can see with the CDI cover, we only have actually two wires coming out of here. And it's just uh, basically a positive and a negative. Okay, so let's uh, pop this cover off, it's just uh, the two Phillips. But essentially, um, what this pulse generator does, it actually creates a pulse for your spark plug. So basically, this is attached to the camshaft, like if you take out the bolt and um, you take off this piece. This is attached to the camshaft in behind. So the reason why this is important, because we want to know basically when to create a pulse or when to create an electrical signal to tell the bike when to fire. So we want to know when, when we want that spark plug to fire. And that has to do with relations of the timing. So basically, if we actually, if we um, remove this cover right here and we had the bike on top dead center, this would, um, let me see, and I'll pull this over a little bit. Basically, when this line right here and this line are pretty much like touching, that's when the bike is on fire. As in, um, that's when, in terms of timing, that is the fire condition that's letting the spark plug know that it's time to make a spark, is what that means. So, in order to test this, it's pretty simple. It literally has two wires. It has, it has a ground and a, I think it's a blue and yellow. So basically, if you were to test this, and you wanted to test for resistance uh, like um, of this sensor, you'd unplug these two connectors, stick your multimeter on, and read the, the res resistance amongst the two of these. It should be about 30 ohms, roughly. So if you're getting that, then that's a good sensor. But another thing as well, if this uh, top of this sensor right here, you can see this in behind, if this little part, uh, part of the rotating magnet if that's dirty you might not get a spark or you'll get an intermittent spark as well also another thing that's very important is the gap between um, the top of that bump and that little sensor so I'll take this apart here now and let you guys see it but that gap has to be between 15 thou of an inch and 25 thou I usually set mine up at 18 thou so We'll take this off and we'll have a little look and inspection and then I'll show you guys how to um, set it up properly and what to watch for because not many people know that this uh, rotating magnet, you can actually install that 180 out and fully upside down. And if that occurs and it's installed 180 out, your timing will be basically 180, 180 degrees out of time. And what that means is that when the bike goes to fire, it won't be um, on top dead center, it'll be more like bottom dead center, like right on the bottom and in an improper timing sequence because there's intake, compression, power, exhaust. So we'll be basically trying to turn the bike on at the wrong time. Okay guys, so I'm going to take this off, but watch, you can tell that this is a magnet and this is the sensor because this is a screwdriver. You can see it wants to stick to it. It's magnetized. They use the, the magnetism um, basically to help help the, se the sensor identify when um, this line and that line is meeting. Another thing to note is that sometimes you can get a bit of play moving in and out if your bolt is not tight enough. You'll actually get a little bit of in and out motion like that and that can make you have a bit of top end noise. So that's another thing to be aware of. So I just took these two screws out. If you're taking yours out, be aware they're extremely small, so don't lose them. They're also hard to get replacements for. Okay guys, I just got the, the screws out. You can take this off completely if you want to, but for demonstration purposes, and just to show you guys how this works, I'll uh, leave this section just hanging here. So this is actually the mechanical advancer itself. In here we got our camshaft. You can see it actually has a bump on it. That bump corresponds with right here. It's basically a um, spline piece. So you can't mess that up. 180 out. You can't do that. It goes on one way. 
You know, the issue that a lot of people may have is that, you see um, this magnet right here with the bolt out. If someone takes this uh, fully apart, they can actually install this 180 upside down. Like, um, let's see if we can do this here now. Yeah, if they, if they um, separate this completely, which it does come apart, sometimes it puts it 180 out. So that means, how would you know that it's orientated in the right direction? Well, you see that bump right here, which corresponds with that. That bump and the top of this uh, magnet right here should be close to each other. Another thing as well, you can see my springs look brand new. It's because I actually did replace these springs because when I had this apart before, those springs were cracked apart. And um, the way this works is that normally it sits a little bit back here, like retarded. So like you can see how um, the camshaft bump is right there. That bump would line up right here. And you can see how um, this magnet is pointed to the right. That means the timing is a little bit retarded. So for starting, it'll be easy. And then as the engine speeds up, um, this timing will advance a bit and help the bike run better. But it's usually a bit retarded, like a bit to the right, for um, timing purposes, just to help um, help with starting the bike easier. So if you have yours apart, make sure that your springs are nice and um, they do basically move and there's no bonding. And make sure this top part of the sensor is clean, otherwise you probably won't get spark or you'll get an intermittent spark or a weak spark. So yeah, I'm gonna stick this back on just got to line this up. There you go. You see it's back in now. You can, you can see it actually rotates. It rotates normally. It's like it's centrifugal, so it, it rotates as the engine spins up. But I'm going to throw this back on now in a second. You can see this is the bottom part of that sensor. This bump right here has to be gapped with the top of this. So I'll show you guys how to gap it as well now. So I've got the plate on, just tighten up those screws. I'm gonna put the bolt on and uh, tighten that up. You can look up the proper spec for this, uh, like the proper torque spec. I usually just goes pretty snug with it. Like I, I wanna tighten off that I'm not gonna over tighten it. And I just wanna snug so it's also not gonna loosen. Okay, I got the bolt tightened. So, um. Now the only thing left to do is to put in the two screws for the sensor. Okay, I got the sensor bolted back on. You can see there's a little bit of play in it. So now um, what we gotta do is that we gotta gap it. So I'll go grab my feeler gauges and I usually get mine at 18 thou, but the manual does say 15 to 25 thou. So I try to put mine in kind of roughly in the middle. Okay, so these screws are loose in order to get that play. You can see here I have a um, 18 thousands, 18 thousands of an inch feeler gauge. And basically all you gotta do is um, you fit the feeler gauge in so it's on top of the bump. This is a little uh, little tricky to do with one hand, but basically I got my 18 thou feeler gauge in between. So we know we have 18 thou gap right there. And um, I'm just gonna make sure, push down a little bit. Yeah, make sure that we got the gap. And now you just tighten your screws, this one here, and the other one. And then now we, we can be sure that our little gap in between the pulser and the sensor is set up to our spec. Okay, so I just um, finished tightening that screw and that one right there. So now we're properly gapped. There's not much play, it's the way it should be. So I'm gonna get a little bit more gasket maker and I'm gonna go around here anyways. You don't have to do that, but I like to do it myself and put the cover back on. So we get the cover back on. We're still connected up here. I never unconnected anything. So that's it, we're all set up. And that's how you set up the mechanical advancer or pulse generator. You want a good seal around here. Try not to um, over tighten these little Phillips screws because I've worked on a lot of these little engines and it's real common to see these that are fully seized and don't want to unbolt or fully stripped out. <laughs> So don't overdo it on the, the tight, tightness. But yeah, hopefully this has helped. Hope clarify some stuff. Well, thanks for watching, guys. Um, feel free to like this video or drop any comments down below if you have any questions or anything like that. All right, guys, thanks a lot. See you again.